We'll keep it rolling, guys. We got Bruno the Hulk Ferreira in the next fight. He's taking on Dustin Stolzfus. No nickname. Bang. He's just here. So for me, this is a weird fight. You know, Dustin Stolzfus obviously coming off of a win. So want to give him his credit and respect. He got the jump on Punahele Soriano. I had the uh, fight not to go the distance there at minus 150, as well as um, Punahele Soriano by sub. So you can imagine my surprise watching him get submitted by Dustin Stolzfus in that spot. When you look at Dustin Stolzfus, I've never been impressed by the guy. Not to say he's a bad fighter, but I always thought he was he was very average, right? Uh, I bet him huge, uh, like three and a half units against Dwight Grant. And the reason I did so is because Dwight Grant is no good. Uh, <laughs> like I'm not trying to be rude, but I think that was the last fight of Dwight Grant's UFC career. He got picked up, dragged all over the octagon, taken down multiple times, and I think that that was like a layup type fight for Stoltzfus. I bet I think I bet him like plus one thirty in that fight. So yeah, that was a great spot. I thought right, and then um, obviously against Abus Magomedov. It was like a battle of who's the best fighter from Germany, right? Because this guy left Pennsylvania, moved to Germany, got his training in there, like had his his pro MMA career over there. So it was all about like who's the best fighter from Germany. And this dude, Abus Magomedov, punted his head off in about 19 seconds. Um, That was the only loss, I believe, in his career via strikes. But it was a brutal one. It was one that did not look very good. Um, And then you look at the Punahele Soriano fight. And guys... We're going to talk about Puna, right? He's on this main card as well. But Puna's a guy that's just been really bad over the course of his UFC career and getting much, much worse. Um, You know, I honestly think that when you saw Puna come into the UFC, um, and again, we'll get into this more later on in in the Puna breakdown, but when you saw him come into the UFC against Jamie Pickett um, after beating Jehovan Pati on the – uh, regional scene on LFA, you thought that this guy was going to be all right. Obviously not finishing Jamie Pickett's a red flag, but you thought this guy, you know, he's from Wartburg. So he's got good D3 wrestling chops. You know, he's got power in his hands. He just seemed like a guy who was poised to make something of himself. And to this point, he's failed to do so pretty um, thoroughly. Right. And, and so you look at, um, Dustin Solzpitz getting the win there. It really reflected on Puna just not having it, right? Not having it on the feet, not having it on the ground. Um, And and so I think that when you're looking at Stoltzfus, he's a guy that (laughs) I've called his fights pretty well so far in the UFC. I don't remember um, what I thought about the Abus Magomedov fight, but like I said, I bet him against Dwight Grant. And I remember breaking down the Gerald Mearshart fight. I want to get this clip. Like I I should go back and I'm terrible about clipping my own stuff and putting out my old breakdowns and stuff like that. But I I remember just talking about that fight and saying, listen, is Gerald Mearshart minus 225 against anybody? Not really, because he's going to probably lose a bunch of the minutes of the fight. Like he's going to lose round one and round two probably to anybody, right? But I just felt like eventually Gerald Mearshart will get the better of a guy like Stoltzfus because he's better at MMA, because he's a better quality black belt, because Dustin Stoltzfus slows down over the course of 15 minutes. And that was exactly what happened, guys. He lost every minute of that fight. Gerald Mearshart kept losing, kept losing, get taken down, get put in bad spots, get put in bad spots. And then all of a sudden, he just surprised him, right? Round three, late in the fight, the Gerald Mearshart special, the round three submission, this turns the table on the guy. Right. And that was one BJJ black belt against another. Shout out to my guy Dixon. Says Liam, are both these guys uh BJJ black belts? Who would you favor in a strictly BJJ match, Dustin or Bruno? We're gonna get into that, right? So we're wrapping up our thoughts on Dustin Solstice here, who is a black belt. But then you look at the Hadolfo Fiera fight, and he was having some success there. He was preventing some takedowns. You know, he was doing a decent enough job keeping the fight upright. But do you guys remember what happened to to turn the tables in that fight? Is that Adolfo Vieira used an elite back take. Guys, I am going to repost this video because I posted this before on Twitter. But it's literally one of the most freakish and insane athletic maneuvers you'll ever see. Where Adolfo like wraps his hands around him and then just pulls himself like Spider-Man like around to the guy's back. It's incredible. Uh, It's a fun clip. But in any case, right? 
that is, you know, Hadolfo, um, Gerald Mearshark, few examples of this guy, Dustin Solsfus, who's supposed to be a black belt. And again, he's not losing the slouches, but supposed to be a black belt. He's getting submitted by these guys, right? He's getting put in these bad positions. He's finding ways to lose fights that he's having some, <laughs> excuse me, success. So he's finding ways to snatch um, defeat from the jaws of victory, right? That I hate guys like that, right? That's something I do not like to get behind long term. Then you look at the other fight, the one that's jarring for me, the one where I'm like, I don't know if I could get behind this guy. Kyle Dawkins, not a bad fighter, but guys, he's eminently beatable, right? If you just go back and look at his record in the promotion, the guy struggled in the UFC. He was 2-4 and 1-0 no contest, okay? His wins in that time are Dustin Stoltzfus and Jamie Pickett, who he submitted in the first round. So when you look at this guy, I got to say to myself, you know, Eric Anders finished Kyle Dawkins, knocked him out. I had the knockout prop plus 600. Roman Delidze finished Dawkins in the first round, like broke his face, brutal knee to the face, horrible. Um, then you look the Jamie Pickett fight. He won that one. I was on Dawkins huge in that fight. Then you look back, the Kevin Holland accidental headbutt. That was just a really weird outcome, but maybe Dawkins got robbed there. I had Dawkins ITD in that fight was what it was. He lost the decision to Phil Hawes, right? So Dustin Stolzfus, that's the only win for Kyle Dawkins along the way um, that wasn't against Jamie Pickett, right? That doesn't speak well to him, right? Then you look at the Joe Pfeiffer fight. There's nothing you can really take away from that fight, in my opinion. It was a back and forth fight. I thought Pfeiffer did look like the guy who would probably get the better of that fight. If he didn't get hurt, he got picked up, kind of based out on his arm. Brutal, right? It's just... One of the things that can happen in this game, I always say that's why there are no locks in MMA because there's weird shit that takes place, right? Somebody falls over, breaks their own arm. Somebody takes a, a wrong step. They turn their toe upside down. That's what could happen in a mixed martial arts fight. That's why I always say no locks in life, but you're just looking for uh, the more likely outcome, right? And so I look at a guy like Stoltzfus and say, can he win the fight? Yes. How does he win the fight? Now let's break that down very briefly. I think the way Stoltzfus wins this fight is he's got to outlast his opponent uh, or he's got to clip him on the chin, right? We've seen he's a human being. Bruno Ferreira can be clipped on the chin. He's a man. He's mortal, right? He can be knocked out. So if Stoltzfus is able to clip him on the chin, if he's able to outlast him in terms of cardio, I think those are the two ways he wins this fight. Now let's get into the question that my guy Dixon asked. We got great people in the chat. We got my guy Locker Room as well. MMA Mafia, glad to see good guys rise. My absolute brother, appreciate you being here. Can't trust none of them with my coin. I'd rather flip a coin. How many cups of coffee this morning, says Locker Room? We got one in one hand. We got one in the other hand, man. We're double fisting the coffees at 10 a.m. local time because we got a lot of great fights to talk about, my brother. Uh, but... Shout out to Dixon as well. He says, Liam, are both these guys black belts? So now let's talk about his opponent. Now let's talk about Bruno the Hulk Ferreira. Guys, he's a double black belt, okay? He's a black belt in judo as well as Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He competes in jiu-jitsu matches still in Brazil. Um, so he's a guy that takes his jiu-jitsu seriously. He's in the gi, right? He knows what he's doing in terms of his techniques. The thing that I like about this guy is the judo. Judo isn't for everybody. Right. Like you kind of have to know how to use judo for MMA in order to make it work. If it's if judo is your whole game and then somebody knows how to clinch break like Holly Holm, you're Ronda Rousey and everything falls apart. Right. But when you look at the people that succeed using judo, they implement it as part of a wrestle judo jitsu system. Right. Shout out to I think it's Justin Flores, J Flow Judo. That's that's what he talks about. Wrestle judo jitsu. It's it's about combining the arts. It's about using the best of all these sports to get the best outcomes in MMA grappling, in your own grappling sessions. Like if I want to beat a judo guy in a judo match, I might have to rely on whatever the best skills I have from wrestling, the best skills I have from jiu It's like using what you're you're best at. And this guy has shown an ability to go out there and, and compete in all positions, I feel. Bruno Ferreira. He went out there against Phil Hawes and he hit a massive hip toss. But when you look through his Instagram and things like that, you could find a lot of um, examples of this guy, like doing seminars, going through his techniques. Um, he can throw, he's strong as shit. Uh, and, and I just have a feeling that in terms of the pure physicality between these two guys, 
I do think they're going to be on a different level. I think Bruno Ferrer is a stronger guy. I think he's more physical. Uh, I think he's going to be able to pick this guy up and turn him sideways in the first round. So the question for me comes down to, is this guy going to gas? Um, because if he doesn't, I think he's going to get takedowns at, at will in this fight. Like if he wants them, I believe his judo is far superior. I think his wrestling is also better. Um, so Stoltzfus isn't a fish out of water with his wrestling, right? He comes from Pennsylvania. I could tell you guys, most of the guys that ever wrapped me up and embarrassed me in my wrestling career were from Pennsylvania or Ohio. So uh, they know how to get down in Pennsylvania. They know how to wrestle, but I've never really seen it with Stoltzfus in a crazy extent, you know, picking up Pfeiffer, that was fine, you know, but it was more so just like Pfeiffer was a green guy. He was still working his way up at that point in his career. I think Pfeiffer in a rerun would, would probably be, um, favored, you know, to beat him, especially over three rounds. So, uh, pretty substantially. So, yeah, I, I just think that when I'm looking at this fight, I see an athleticism gap that favors Bruno Ferreira. I think he's the faster guy. I think on the feet, he hits harder. Uh, so for me, the intangibles here are the fact that he hasn't been doing it for quite as long and he might not have the cardio to go all night because he's built pretty stocky. But I think that the amount of experience he has in terms of different combat sports and his uh, you know, confidence, I think he's a guy that's going to go out there and get this win. Um, the last time out, we saw Bruno Ferreira beat Phil Hawes and he did it in very impressive fashion, right? Um, if you go out there and you got to grind out the win and grease it out and it's close and it's super competitive, maybe you come away saying, I don't know about this guy, but I think that that was Phil Hawes fighting for his life and his career and really going out there and putting everything he had on the line. And, uh, and he got cleaned up, right? Bruno Ferreira, let him know what time it was. Nurse Sultan Ruzaboev, guys, I bet him, right? He was plus 190 against Bruno Ferreira. And I just said to myself, I was like, this guy knocked out Gregory Rodriguez. That's a great fight, right? That's a great um, win. And, and I was impressed by it. But Gregory Rodriguez is an elite jiu-jitsu guy. You're going to try and take that guy to the ground? You're going to try and beat him up there? Phil Hall is a, a Division I uh, type wrestling prospect. He's very strong, physical, knows how to wrestle, um, competed at a high level, was scouted at a high level. So you think of a guy like uh, Phil Hawes and you say, man, you know, the fact that he's out there dominating him in the wrestling, that speaks to his athleticism and his pedigree and his ability to wrestle. And so I think that there's a lot of, uh, upside on a guy like Bruno Ferreira long-term uh, that there's not on a guy like Stolzfus long-term, but also when you're talking about money line sides, the one thing I will give to the credence of a guy like um, Stolzfus is number one, he's been fighting UFC level guys. You know, he's got a two and four record. It's not great. He's not beating very good guys, but Gerald Mearshart is a good fighter. He's a solid black belt. Adolfo Vieira in a pure jiu-jitsu match would fucking dominate Bruno Ferreira. Let's just be fair about that. Bruno Ferreira, good fighter. Right. But also he's a guy that is not as proven as a guy like Adolfo uh, on the mat. Right. In pure jujitsu, Adolfo is known as a black belt hunter. You know, Bruno Ferreira is known as a guy that does MMA that just so happens to be a judo and jujitsu black belt. Right. So it's just it's a different level at at that rate. But when you're talking about the physicality, the athleticism, the upside, I just think a guy like Bruno Ferreira has more chance to do big things in the UFC, stick around for a long time, trains with a lot of other high-level UFC fighters from Brazil as well. Are they the best guys? Maybe not, but a Brinson, Hiberio, these guys, they're all working their way up. They're all hungry. They're all pretty young and, and sticking with it. So he's 31 years of age. He's not a spring chicken, but he's had over 10 fights. You know, he knows who he is. He knows where his bread is buttered. He's got skills on the feet. He's got knockout power. He's proven that. Goes out there and finishes these fights. But in addition, he's got an ability to compete on the mat. He's got some submission skills. So in terms of the money line pricing, I understand sharp guys are going to come in on Stoltzfus here on upside. Say, hey, this guy's had a ton of UFC fights. He's now starting to look a little bit better uh, of a version of himself. And you're getting plus 2XX to find out about Bruno Ferreira. I basically took a flyer, a, hey, let's see how bad this Nurse Sultan Ruzabov guy is. Everybody says he's a fraud. Let's find out. That's what you're doing, I feel, with Stoltzfus here. You're saying, hey, this guy's two and four in the UFC, but I know what I'm getting against a guy in Ferreira who might gas out after eight minutes. Fair enough. And I think that that's like the upside on Stoltzfus. But for me, I'm leaning with the athleticism gap here. And uh, I, I think that, you know, one way or the other, we're probably going to see Stoltzfus getting finished here. Um, shout out to my guy. Oh, we got our guy Ralph in the comments. So uh, shout out to our guy Ralph in the comments. It says, J-Flow, coming to New York in October. You better come to the seminar. How can I miss it? 
Uh, that sounds great. I didn't know he was a judo black belt. Also, I would encourage you guys go through his Instagram, go watch the videos of him hitting crazy throws and all this stuff at practice. And the drills that they do seem like stuff that I've been doing a long time at wrestling practice. One of the things that have made me strong uh, in life, just like, you know, carrying partners, right? Partner carries across the mat. They're doing it sideways. They're doing it up in the air. They're doing it on the back. They're doing it for double legs. And there's a reason why this guy, when he reaches down and picks somebody up, he slams. Them. There's a reason why when he hips into somebody, they get thrown overhead. It, it comes from practice and repetition. So very serious guy. Um, shout out to my guy, Joseph, as well. I really appreciate you, brother. Says, chat, sign up for the Patreon. Uh, the money is in the details each week. I appreciate you, brother. We're coming off an L last week. Transparency is always the number one thing, but I'm right back to work every week. We're at a 15% ROI year to date and looking to keep the ball rolling. So I do not want to lose on my birthday weekend. I will tell you that I'm coming, uh, you know, with discipline and preparation this week. They're going to have to earn it from me if the bookie wants it this week. Um, but each and every week I try and bring the effort and the intensity. So I appreciate everybody who rocks with me. I appreciate all the support. And hopefully we can keep the ball rolling, get back on track this week and keep the great year that we're having uh, so far, you know, going. So I think that uh, this is an interesting fight, a fun fight. I'm leaning with Bruno Ferrer to get the job done. What we'll do here is we'll just click over and see what fight numbers has on uh, the best available offering here, right? So you're looking at right now the best price on Dustin Stoltz was plus 225 over at Bet365. Meanwhile, Bruno Ferreira sitting at about a minus 250 on the offshore books. So you're seeing about a 25 cent market with here. The over under is set at one and a half rounds. For me, that does seem, you know, especially with a juiced under, like it, it's kind of leaning towards that Ferreira side for me personally. But uh, again, that that's a fight that we're going to have to wait and see. 